From Jonathan Taylor, tailback to Jonathan Taylor, traded. What's going on in the Indianapolis Colts running back room? We got all that and much more on today's episode of Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, football fans? And welcome into another episode of Locked On NFL, your daily podcast, bringing you all the biggest stories from around the National Football League every single Monday through Friday. We appreciate all you everydayers out there making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, you can always subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Tuesday, so you got your brothers from other mothers and other colors. It's Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on Twitter, as well as Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on the app formerly known as Prince and we're very grateful to have you here with us today uh, I've already brought we're we're not even a minute in and Luke is broken how you doing buddy? what you okay? <laughs> what did you just call me I said brother from another mother mother and other color like it's fine well like it's, like, you know, I'm a different color than I started this show. That's for uh, sure. Yeah, you're very red now. We appreciate everybody for being here for another episode of Locked on NFL. Today's episode of Locked on NFL brought to you by friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked on NFL for $20 off of your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We'll tell you a little bit more about them later. Today's episode of Locked NFL, we're going to take a look at our yike and like. going to remind you that it's better to be accurate than to be first in the media landscape. We're also going to take a look at Sam Howe cooking for the new look commanders. And to kick us off, of course, Jonathan Taylor, the Indianapolis Colts running back, granted the opportunity to go and uh, look for a trade. Uh, Luke, you and I are on different sides of this. So I, I, I'll say my take very quickly, which is that I don't think that Jonathan Taylor, the running back that has been in his contract dispute with the Indianapolis Colts over the course of this entire offseason, goes anywhere because I don't think that any team is going to leap to bail the Indianapolis Colts up out of this situation. But you might look at it a little bit differently. What do you think happens with Jonathan Taylor here? Well, so here's the deal. I, I think when you hear, you know, they've been given permission to seek a trade, to me, functionally, that's hitting free agency. That means you get to go negotiate contracts with other teams. Whether the Colts will honor that and actually trade you, it's all a matter of markets and, and who will pay what. Mm -hmm. But that sounds to me like a divorce. That is, okay, Jonathan Taylor, you will not play for us, the, Indi the Indianapolis Colts. We Here we are accepting that. Go get the best deal you can and negotiate a deal, and, and then we'll try to figure out what we'll trade to that team for. Um, so I, I think that it does feel a little bit more realistic that mm -hmm. Jonathan Taylor is going to move here. Um, somebody's running back is going to get hurt. Some teams might not be happy with the running back rooms at all. And getting a guy like Jonathan Taylor and the luxury of extending him, if you're a team that's got maybe a lot of cap space or something and uh, is perhaps looking for some cornerstones to build around, I think I can name a couple of teams like that sure uh then hey maybe let's figure out a way to get this deal done because for the colts i don't know if it was necessarily a money thing it wasn't a it, it felt a little more personal with what jim or was tweeting and, and the way that you know his jonathan taylor's agent was was on twitter i don't know if it was necessarily all right the colts don't want to pay me i'm going to go somewhere that will pay me which i think is just business and is perfectly fair uh, it felt a little more bitter than that. And so it gives me a little bit more optimism, I guess, that another team that isn't run by Jim Ursay <laughs> <laughs> or one of his ilk um, yes. maybe can pull this off. We'll, we'll talk about a couple of teams because I, I do think that there's one team that can come from the top rope here and, and, and possibly get this done and has like the gall to do it. Uh, but to me, this is more of a like, Oh, yeah, prove it. Prove it. Like, go out there and show us that you're going to get the money that you think you're going to get somewhere else. Because, like, we have to we have to understand here that seeking permission for a trade, while the agent is negotiating the idea of getting a trade, they're also going to be talking to the team that they would potentially be trading him to to try to figure out, okay, can we also get an extension here done, right? Like, Jonathan Taylor would be in a situation here to where he would be going somewhere and saying, okay, I wouldn't mind coming here. 
now you and my agent, y'all get to talk about what the extension is going to look like. Like that would have to be in place for the trade to happen. And for, I would imagine Jonathan Taylor and the Colts to sign off on it. The Colts are asking for a first round pick or picks to the equivalent of that's always the asking price for every yeah. player in the NFL. It doesn't we'll see matter, how long right? that lasts. Yeah. So, so for me, it's, it's one of two things, right? Either the Colts aren't going to get what they are asking for, which if they get, which look, if they trade, Jonathan Taylor, they're not going to get what they're asking for. Uh, but at the same time, the second thing for me is that it's really just that they have no intent on trading them. And they basically are saying, okay, you think you can get more money somewhere else? Because this, to me, this whole thing started at money and then kind of became personal over the course of time. And so it's like, okay, you think you can get money somewhere else? Go show us that. Go show us that. And then if you feel like you can get that money elsewhere, go get that money elsewhere and we'll trade you. And then we'll try to get a first round pickup out of it. But I do love the irony of, we're not going to pay a running back because a running back doesn't, you know, it was a low value position and we're not going to pay for that. But also we want a first round pick for our running back. Like, Please pay on. me for a running back. Yeah. Like just ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> but, but if there is a team with the audacity to do this, right. To trade whatever it might take for Jonathan Taylor, do you have a team in mind that would be a good fit and that would make sense? So there are a couple, they're all in various stages of a rebuild. Uh, mm -hmm. which is sort of where you find teams that don't have an established back uh, that, you know, would, would have be a good place for uh, Jonathan Taylor, you know, a team like where the jets were right before they, they just signed right. Dalvin cook, of course, mm -hmm. um, like that would have been a great landing spot for an alpha back. And it was just a different mm -hmm. one. Um, but I look uh, right just to the South of me, uh, it, or of my team in Minnesota, mm -hmm. Chicago, Ah, they are flush with point. assets right now. They still have yeah. so many assets for 2024 paying him. Not a worry trading for him. Not a worry. They just traded down from the first overall pick. They've got draft picks coming out the rear end. Yep. Uh, they're currently their running back rotation is Khalil Herbert, Dante Foreman and Roshan Johnson. If I, a, if I ever hear you rookie. say Khalil Herbert with that much disdain again, I'm going to jump through this screen. <laughs> Look, I, I don't mind him. He's a, he's a decent back. And I think if the Bears don't do this, they'll totally be fine here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if if I think about what the Bears are trying to build here, what they need to build around Justin Fields, and, and I think perhaps the best thing for Justin Fields would be yep. a a running back with some gravity that you know you can do read options on and you know get fields out into the open field. You can do RPO stuff, RPO sprint out stuff where you can get mm -hmm. moving pockets and get him kind of moving around. His talent of course is going to be evading pressure, running around, making plays and all that. And that tends to pair very well with a power running game um, yep. or a, a powerful running game. I should say not mm -hmm. literally power. Although I think that's what the Colts did for most of Jonathan Taylor's time there. Yeah. So I, I think Chicago is a good fit. I could also see teams like, uh, Houston or Tampa doing it, although those teams appear to be uh, have a longer road ahead of them. Yes. Rebuild yes. wise, they kind of are at the beginning of their path where the, the Bears are in the middle of their path to the point where they should they need to start having, you know, actual expectations probably next mm -hmm. year. Um, you are not really going to say that about the Texans or the Bucks. So I, but hey, those guys don't really have like, you know, bell cow backs. Um, I don't know. Do you have any other teams yeah. that come to your mind? Uh, Chicago was my number one. I, I love the idea of Chicago making that move. As you mentioned, they have the assets to do it. It would be good. You kind of get to build a little bit of the Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Hurts approach around. That's uh, kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. That kind of thing. Like, I love that. Uh, that's my favorite one. But to me, the team that has just the absolute audacity to do it is it's it's Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. I mean they they, they <laughs> Hey Jerry, do you want to do something real funny? <laughs> I, I, After I all it. that Zeke stuff, <laughs> yes. Deuce Vaughn absolutely exploding. You got Tony <laughs> yeah. Pollard on the right. franchise tag. You say Ooh. F it, let's bring in JT. Oh, I would love to see it. I just think it would be so good. All right, y'all coming up next, we're gonna take a look at Sam Howell because he cooked for the commanders. And how cool is it to watch the culture change? in Washington right now. We got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on NFL. I got a story for you, Ross. So okay. uh, my father and I are going to take a trip to Las Vegas to watch Vi the Vikings play the Raiders uh, at the at Allegiant Stadium mm -hmm. with some family. Um, there's going to be a group of five of us. And we actually had this like really, really tough time finding five tickets in a row. Yep. Even though that game is in December, it's August. Yep. Uh, 
buying tickets to your favorite sports game should not be that stressful. And that is what game time is here for. Uh, they have a great database for last minute ticket deals. Forget all the planning months in advance. Forget having to think, hmm, what 2024 games should I have to do? I want to go to, <laughs> you know, in like two months from now or like when the schedule is released and then refreshing the page really quick before the tickets go on. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy theater, all kinds of events right up to the day of the event. And the game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will accredit you 110% of the difference. Challenge accepted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can get for images real. of your seat too before you buy so you can make sure you're not like stuck behind a pillar or whatever. And tickets are sent directly to your phone. So you don't have to dig through your email and get all stressed out on the day while you're sitting there in the line fumbling with your phone. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use Locked On NFL for twenty bucks off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, continuing on with today's episode of Locked On NFL. Sam Howell cooking, cooking, cooking for the Washington Commanders. And it's super fun to see. We appreciate you as always making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day. Uh, Luke, you and I have been, well, okay, there's, there's two truths to this, right? Like you and I have been adamant about following and also celebratory about everything going on in Washington when it comes to the sale <laughs> of the team, Dan Snyder out of the NFL. So now the next piece to all of it was, what does the team look like on the field? Well, right. the uh, commanders did not disappoint in their Monday night preseason game. And of course, we know that it's the preseason. Uh, nerds like Luke and I can get a little excited about the preseason, though. Uh, and I do think that there is enough to be excited about here if you are a Washington Commanders fan. We just saw um, Sam Howe go nearly lights out, a 123.4 passer rating. Uh, he completed uh, out of his 25 passes, 19 of them. It's a 76% completion percentage, two touchdowns for 188 yards. It's great to see it. It's awesome to see it all like continue in terms of the culture change for Washington on the field. How important, Luke, do you think that it is everything going on in Washington to now see like a viable and exciting product on the football field for commanders fans. I just the fact that their fans don't have to like kind of hate their team a little bit yeah. is already a win. Yeah. And I think we all kind of have no, like it felt like when the, the commanders were just kind of rolling in with like, yeah, we'll just have like Sam Howell battle it out and that'll be fine. Uh, it kind of felt <laughs> like, Oh, okay. So you're not taking this season seriously, but Hey, right. shoot. Maybe we were all wrong. Maybe he's yeah. just a baller and only the commanders knew about it until they got him on, on you know, actually playing football on camera. Um, that would be super sick as much of an L as I like. I would have to eat a good bit of crow uh, <laughs> but because <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of his coming out either. Mm -hmm. um, but if that really is who he is and, and the nature of that quarterback play, scrambling, running around, evading sacks, scramble drills, that's a really fun brand of football to watch. Um, if the commanders can be fun and they can leave all of the Dan Snyder drama behind them with a really fun season in a stacked NFC East, if they can actually make a push at that division. Yeah, that is going to make all of those bitter tastes wash out real fast. Big time, big time. Yeah, we we're doing we've been recording our uh, division previews. So we'll have our big NFL ultimate NFL preview show coming out on uh, August 31st. And we were doing kind of this, the conversations with the NFC East. And one of the questions that we hit is uh, which team that didn't make the playoffs in your division, doing this conversation division by division last year will make the playoffs in 2023. And poor David Harrison of Locked On Commanders, he was the only one, only one in the, in the division that didn't make the playoffs, his team. So he had to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, go to bat for his guys. And, you know, one of the things that he talked about were the weapons, not just Sam Howell, but the weapons around Sam Howell, including Jahan Dotson, the wide receiver out of Penn State who they drafted last year. The Ohio State University wide receiver, Terry McLaurin, one of my former draft crushes. Diami Brown. Now, what's uh, the status on him? Because yeah, I this is a big hurt. Yeah, today. this is a big this is a big one. So x-rays were negative, uh, but they okay. did rule him out in that game after the injury for, uh, for sure. toe injury, which are you 100% going to do. I think what you do now is you take Terry McLaurin and you get yourself a little shelf and you put him up on that shelf until week one. And you say, you're going to stay oh, right sure. there. Yeah, you get all the mental reps you need. It's going to be fine. 
Like they need him just as much as, and Sam Howell needs him just as much as anybody else. Right. And so I love right. the weapons that are all around there. You want to do everything you can to keep them healthy, but there is a really good supporting cast around Sam Howell is kind of the big takeaway here and a defense that really shouldn't be slept on either. So I think there's a lot of reasons to be, I don't want to say optimistic, but there's a lot of reasons to not dread the season starting if you're a commander's fan, which there are some fan bases around the NFL that have to dread as the right. season begins. Right. Like maybe they're taking this a little bit more seriously than I thought. Yeah. I mean, look, if you look at, you know, Dotson, McLaurin, Antonio Gibson back there. Yeah. Uh, you can, yeah, make make an argument that there might be something cooking here a little bit. And hey, here is the deal. If Sam Howell is real, this is what I've said to basically every team with a young quarterback. If that quarterback yeah. is real, you do not need to hang your entire hopes on this year. Yep. If he is real and you guys go, you know, six and 11, that's fine. That's you got, y'all should be thrilled with that. Cause that means you have your quarterback yeah. and building around that is so much easier than trying to find the guy. Absolutely. hundred percent. Right. Like if you get to a like, let's say you get to a situation here to where Sam Howell has like a decent passing season, like a good, a solid, good passing season. He averages, you know, over 65% of his, you know, of his passes in terms of his completion percentage. Uh, he goes over, let's say what, 3,500, well, 17th game now. So let's say like over 3,800 yards or whatever. Um, and then, you know, uh, a plus touchdown to interception ratio, all that. But then the team just struggles elsewhere and loses games. You still have every reason to be excited about it. Cause now you get to go back to the drawing board and all of those, assets that you're watching other teams funnel into the quarterback position. Look at the San Francisco 49ers and everything that they did only to have the very last pick of a draft mm -hmm. become their starting quarterback. You don't have to worry about any of all that stuff. You just get to now say that's the quarterback and then build and tinker right. around that quarterback. And that's it. That's a yeah. huge, huge advantage. You, you get to start going, hmm, well, I guess we like need a guard in this draft. And like, right. I don't know, I guess we maybe we could use a safety. Like we, you start having that conversation instead of going, hmm, how can we change the direction of our franchise this time? <laughs> you know, like you get to think a little smaller and there's, there's a comfort in that. Yeah. Like uh, think, it, I, I think about like the Vikings in particular, right? Like in that say, year. Like, I, I've been covering a team with a quarterback that I'm not always that happy with. <laughs> but it is nice to go into off seasons and not be like, hmm, can they trade for Matt Ryan this year? Like and right. have to be coming to terms with all kinds of bad ideas just because they maybe get me out of this, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And look, I mean, you look at the the couple seasons ago, the 20 was at the 2020 draft and they drafted um, uh, Justin Jefferson. Right. Um, you might not good? have. Yeah, you might not have had that luxury if Kirk Cousins wasn't the quarterback. And if you were instead you know, you had a bunch of replacement level players in the quarterback room. You know who that would have been? Ooh, who would that have been that year? If they needed a quarterback in 2020? Jordan. Yeah. Hunt. Oh, of course. Yeah. Or maybe but, Hertz. Maybe they would. Maybe. They yeah. Would. Yeah, perhaps. But yeah, I mean, you're you're like rolling the dice at the quarterback position. And 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 look, we'll see what happens with Jordan Love. Obviously, it would have panned out great with Jalen Hurts, but uh right. but or well, maybe well, maybe, right? Because yeah. it's it's all a different organization if they if they didn't if they put Hurts behind a worse O-line for that they had yep. those couple of years than the Eagles True. had. Maybe he doesn't develop the same. And you know, maybe Jordan Love doesn't develop the same if he's not right. there. But Jordan Love is the closest quarterback like in the draft order. So that's the yes, the chase yeah. the rabbit of it. That makes sense for sure. So yeah, no, it's great. It's it's awesome for Commanders fans, and I look forward to seeing what the Commanders and Sam Howell are able to do here in 2023. Coming up next, we got Yike and Like. Remember, it's always better to be right and accurate than it is to be first. We'll give you an example of how that didn't necessarily pan out uh, just this past week. Got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked On NFL. It is fantasy draft season. And you know where Ooh, you ooh. win your fantasy leagues? It's not round one. It's not round two. It's when you start taking like round five, six. Yeah. When some teams, you know, sometimes, you know, that weird coworker starts taking a kicker and all that. <laughs> well, Vinny Iyer and eBay Motors have partnered up together to get you perfect fantasy picks for these times. So what about somebody like DJ Moore, who is going to be far and away the number one option in Chicago in a passing game. They are trying to revitalize. Now, look, volume's not going to be the same as it will be for some of the guys going rounds one and two, but that value could go from zero to 60. And maybe it fits with whatever else you did. Maybe you went sprung for Pat Mahomes or Travis, Travis Kelsey, and you really need wide receivers. DJ Moore can be just the sell. 
that you need because fantasy football is all about that guaranteed fit, that perfect fit. And eBay Motors understands that. And eBay Motors understands that it's also the same deal with your car. They have over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips. No matter what your car needs, you need a version of that part that fits your car, that is actually compatible with your car, whatever the make and model are. Do you know what carburetors your car takes? I don't. Nobody knows that. <laughs> eBay Motors knows that, and they have a database that will help you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So you can uh, relax, sit back, and make sure that you have what your car needs. For all the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for that green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, everybody, wrapping up today's episode of Locked on NFL with the Tuesday special yike and like, where we each give you one thing we like and one thing that we yike, as in one thing that we don't like. Uh, I'm going to kick us off today here, Luke, because this one was close to home for me, uh, both literally and figuratively. Um, Jimmy Graham, uh, he was arrested uh, while wandering in traffic was the report. And this is where I want to kind of like really lean in on my take here that it's better to be accurate than to be first. The initial reports that came out were strewn with language about him being arrested and supposedly on a controlled substance and all this other stuff. Well, the New Orleans Saints quickly put out a press release that clarified everything on Saturday after news had broken Saturday morning, that it wasn't a controlled substance and that instead it was a medical emergency and that they suspect that he had a seizure. Uh, I am somebody that since the age of 15 has battled seizures. I have epilepsy. And I know firsthand just how disorientation uh, can be, first of all, misconstrued by other parties. The thing that I want to highlight here is that if, if, if there's anybody that's listening to this show that really wants to get into sports media, sports journalism, stuff like that, uh, err on the side of being accurate. Don't err on the side of being first, because this is a person that dealt with something that was very, very serious uh, and effectively had his name dragged through the mud for like three hours until the New Orleans Saints were able to put out uh, a release and until he was able to get medical checks done and stuff like that. He is back here in New Orleans. He's back with the team, just so everybody knows. And we don't know when he's going to get back to football, if he'll get back to football, all that. But it is just a really good lesson of like, it's better to be accurate than to be first. And first doesn't get you anywhere, especially when you're wrong. The only thing I want to add to that is people will react to whatever you say, whether you vetted it, they're not going to vet it for you. Right. So right. however vetted you, if you, especially if you're a reporter that is trusted, um, and I think the reporters that are trusted don't do this, that's why they're trusted. Right. But if you're trying to be that person, uh, understand that if you come out and say something wrong, people are going to react to that and then log off. You can yep. issue as many corrections as you want. There will be people that just never see it. And you have now just made those people misinformed. There's a responsibility to that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, my yike, I'm I'm going to stick with the world of sports media here. I need people to quit whining about having to cover preseason games. <laughs> uh, my goodness. Uh, for one, it's your job. Go to work. We all have to go to work. All right. You're an adult. Get dressed and go to work. Uh, but <laughs> for two, the preseason is extraordinarily compelling. If you do your homework on the team now, look, mm -hmm. Ross and I, we cover our teams fairly in depth. We have daily podcasts on them, so we're going to know them better than your average Joe. Um, but for example, for, for my team, I spent this whole off season doing backstories on every single player in the 90. And you know what? Every single one of them was interesting. Every yeah. single person has a cool story. Every yeah. person in the world has a cool story. Yep. And if you take some time to get to know that the preseason will never be boring to you again. I can tell you right now that when number 31 on the Vikings, Tay Gowan, who unless you are a Cardinals fan, an Eagles fan, or an absolute sicko about the draft, or a Vikings fan, those are the three teams he's played for, you will not know the name Tay Gowan. Mm -hmm. But he has one of the most compelling stories on the team. And if he actually does manage to make the roster, it's an, like an emotional beat that rivals like the, the climax of Remember the Titans. Nice. <laughs> um, it is so compelling. The preseason rules. And if you're whining about it, that's because you didn't do your homework. And if you report mm. on the team, if you cover the, and I'm not talking about Vikings people. I don't, I don't think I no, no. even know who I would be talking about with the Vikings. I've seen this for other teams. I've seen this for 
Rams people complaining about having to do it in a quote unquote hurricane, which turned out to be like a moderate rain. <laughs> I've seen this with tons of other beats. Your beat has someone that does this. Uh -oh. They want to whine about covering the preseason. I say, take a dump or get off the pot. Cause there are a lot of people that want that job that want to be in the press box, covering the team for a living that are envious of you. And if you don't like it, then I don't know, go get a sales job or something because the preseason rocks. It is it. compelling, and these are people that you are covering. They're not stat boxes, and just because the one that's on your fantasy team is on the bench doesn't mean that this crap doesn't matter. This is someone's career and livelihood, so quit whining about it. You have wow. a cool job. This is outstanding. What a, what a, what a just from the top rope, Luke Braun. I love it. Uh, all right, my <laughs> like is going to be super quick. Uh, I just love seeing all these young rookie quarterbacks kind of ball out, right? Like, I think we see year in and year out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh, he's been incredible. He's been all, yeah. I, talk about somebody I, would, I need to. So talk about somebody I need to eat crow about. I had no faith in him panning out, and it looks like oh, I am oh, very some wrong. Some of us knew. I love it. I love it. It looks like I was very <laughs> wrong about that one, and I love it. Uh, and so, like, I, I just love that because, we're, like, we see it year in and year out. Like, oh, this wide receiver class is really good, followed by another year where everybody goes, oh, this wide receiver class is really good, followed by another year where everybody goes, oh, this wide receiver class is really good. And then, like, all the running backs are usually pretty good. So it's cool to see, like, the most important position in the NFL panning out young for some of these quarterbacks. Like, I'm not saying that all these guys need to be starters right away, but in two, three, five, six years or whatever, if they're backup quarterbacks in the NFL, that's awesome. That's really, really cool. And so I love seeing kind of the early jump for some of these young, uh, young quarterbacks. And some of them are going to be starters right away. We've already heard that about True. Anthony Richardson. Of course. To circle back to the Colts, you know, Colts fans having a weird day, you know, Jonathan Taylor might get traded. This is <laughs> going to be a weird, you guys don't have to care at all. You have your quarterback yep. and he's winning the starting job when he was supposed to need a year. Yep. And, and you got Zach Moss the starting job <laughs> and Zach Moss game changer. I love uh, speaking Moss. of game changers. Mm -hmm. My like is going to, I'm going to be a homer about it. So okay. the Minnesota Vikings have uh, <laughs> something called mustache Monday okay. that I guess has, has happened. I believe this is organized by Kirk cousins. Sure. Um, so that's going to go about, exactly as you're picturing it. And I have a picture of it. If you are just listening on audio, I strongly encourage that you come over to YouTube and watch this uh, or do. I think there's other places you can see it, but uh, come on over to YouTube so you can see this picture, Ross, uh, dying to know your thoughts on this. Oh mustache. yeah, buddy. Oh it yeah. It is banging. He has a, <laughs> Kirk Cousins has a handlebar mustache right now. That is my like. <laughs> That's How so, much yeah. does that rock? This dude looks like he's about to slam two natty lights and crush you in beer pong. Heck yeah. <laughs> I love it. He, this this is... guy has fireworks in his garage. <laughs> he eats at Arby's. He would that that is a that is a handlebar <laughs> mustache that would make Cam Jordan jealous. Like that's really <laughs> that's really outstanding. I hope he keeps it all year. That's fantastic. Can't not. Oh, now the only man. thing that I would I that wish guy they would have thoughts on. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's got uh, some a lot of flags in his living room. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish he would have saved that or shaved that, I guess, for quarterback. I wish they would have had him on quarterback this year. Oh, yes. It's last year. That way we could have seen that. In let's just, let's in, bring it back up. Oh, it's so good. I can't wait to see the press conferences. Like, imagine, imagine having that facial hair after a devastating loss. Like a <laughs> devastating loss. And you have there to go was... up and do a press conference with that. So I don't know if you remember after the 33-point uh, comeback against the Colts, uh -huh. Kirk Cousins came out in a suit, a purple suit with Vikings logos on it. Yes. And famously, yes. his wife, Julie, dresses him for press conferences. Yes, I remember that. Uh, this is something that he told us a, a year or two ago. It was also featured on the Netflix show. So Julie picked that. And somebody asked her, like, so if you guys didn't make the comeback, would you be wearing that? <laughs> and he had a backup outfit. Good. So, yes. <laughs> you have to. We know he has the wherewithal, but he's not the only one. Like the whole offensive line has on oh, TJ Hawkinson is rocking the mustache. So Everybody good. that that has a good mustache is rocking a mustache at TCO Performance Center in Egan, Minnesota right now. And let me tell you, it bangs. Heck yes. I love it. I love it. Hey, it's buy-in, right? Like everybody's buying in. Like there's a community it's, there. There's a culture there. That's really cool. And awesome. it's it's loose. They're having fun. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. at the end of the day, it's a game. That's awesome. Uh, at the end of the day, though, this is not a game. 
This is Locked on NFL, and we appreciate you very much for being here for another episode of Locked on NFL and for joining Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL and myself, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on the app formerly known as Prince. Uh, we appreciate you very much for joining us and for being here with us tomorrow. Tony and James answering the biggest questions from around the NFL. Make sure you tune in and get all of that sweet, sweet content and that sweet, sweet fire. We appreciate you very much for being here with us and, of course, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day here on the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.